My name is Charlotte Laws, and this segment is called Don't Dump on Trump. I am speaking to the elites, the both on the Republican and on the Democratic side, as well as the pundits who are calling for Trump to get out of the race, who call him a clown, who say we can't take him seriously. This is both in print media and in television media. And I'm not talking about all reporters or all media because there's some wonderful hosts, wonderful pundits, wonderful reporters out there. I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about those few who have this kind of snobby elitist attitude that, oh, I know he won't be in the race. Oh, he won't be the candidate. Oh, he should just get out. He's just a clown. And I'm really kind of fed up with hearing it. Trump has support across the board. He has Republicans, independents, and Democrats. And this is something I even wrote in my article in Huffington Post, The Bull in a China Shop. I wrote this weeks ago. And, and that's at a time when everybody was saying, oh, it's just the right-wing weirdos or the anti-illegal um, immigration crowd or the crazies, you know, the right-wing crazies are the ones who are supporting him. And I said, no, that's not the case. And it's clearly not the case. And according to the Gallup poll, 42% of this country identify as independents, a majority. And 30% identify as Democrats and 26% identify as Republicans. And for decades, as long as I can remember, I have been saying the independents should throw, throw over this two-party system, that we need to eradicate essentially this two-party system. And it, it's just the whole idea that the Republicans and Democrats have had this kind of control. They've been hijacking the elections for so long, intimidating people, forcing people, kind of mentally manipulating people to vote for their candidate. As an example, what the parties do is they will say, you have to vote for our candidate, otherwise the other one will win. That evil person over there in the other party Ooh, you don't want that to happen, do you? And that's what both sides do. That's what the two parties do. And so all the people in the middle, the majority of people in the middle, are, are kind of manipulated into voting for one of those two candidates because they're told your vote won't count. If you vote for a third party, if you vote for someone who's not in the Democratic or Republican Party, you're just throwing away your vote. And so when you have people telling you that and then people fall in line and vote because they say, oh, well, I guess I have to vote for one of the two parties, you never have any change. And so that's what Donald Trump is doing is he's woken up those people in the middle who are fed up, people like me. I'm a true independent. I have voted for Republicans. I have voted for Democrats. I voted for lots of people who aren't even in the election. I've written in names. I wrote Ron Paul's name, I think, in three times in presidential elections, and he wasn't even on the ballot. I wrote Ralph Nader's name in uh, several times. I don't think he was on the ballot. I worked on Reagan's campaign in 1980, so I voted for Reagan. I voted for Dukakis in 1988. I worked on two campaigns in 2000 at the same time. I worked on Bill Bradley's campaign, a Democrat, and I worked on John McCain's campaign, a Republican. I liked John McCain back then because he was a maverick. Then he became kind of a fall in line party guy and I lost interest in him. And when he chose Sarah Palin, it was like, Ugh, never be able to vote for somebody with Sarah Palin on the ticket. So I've been all over the place and I, I venture to guess that a lot of independents are like me. There are a lot of us out there who cross party lines. We don't really care. We're voting for the person. We're voting for um, the, the issues that matter. And we don't fall in line with the issues in any party. I mean, that's another misnomer. And that's something else the pundits and a lot of the reporters don't seem to understand is that you're not going to completely agree with any candidate down the line. And yet the Republican Party says, oh, you must check mark, check mark, check mark. You have to agree with us on all these issues or you're not going to get the base. Oh, the base. Oh my God, I might not get the base. And the Democrats do the same thing. They want you to fall in line with the the, the, the party, you know, the banner for the party, d d d d like little robots. You're supposed to be mindless. You're supposed to be um, idiots and do what the party leaders tell you to do. I mean, it's really pathetic to me. And a lot of us are really turned off by that. But there are a lot of people out there, we don't, we don't feel like we fit into any of the party lines. I mean, even somebody who's a staunch Republican probably doesn't agree with them on every issue. And the same thing with the Democrats. I mean, I, for one, I'm for universal health care. I'm also for school vouchers. I have always supported gay marriage 
On the other hand, I'm about as far right on illegal immigration as you can possibly get. So I'm all over the map, and I venture to guess that there are a lot of voters out there like that. So I'm not going to agree down the line with any candidate, whether it's Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton or Jeb Bush or whoever it may be. I'm not going to agree on every issue with someone. I have to still select somebody if I want to vote or write someone in, which is always an option, of course. And in this election, I have decided that Donald Trump has the vision for this country. And he has finally woken up this, this majority, the silent majority that he talks about. <laughs> That's the independence. That's this 42%. And, and many of the people are probably even identified as Democrats and Republicans who have been woken up and realized, wait a minute, why am I being a mindless cog? Why am I being a robot? Why am I going along with the party line? When t Trump is attacked by Fox News or by party members or whoever it may be for not, a, for not saying that he will mindlessly support whoever the Republican candidate is, if it's not him, I think that's a great thing that he does that because it shows he's a maverick. He shows he's not a conformist, that he's not just going to mindlessly say, oh, sure, I'll just do whatever you say because I'm an idiot. I mean, it's actually embarrassing that the other candidates agreed to do it. I mean, they should be embarrassed by that. I mean, that's not something I think is a positive quality. And think about this scenario. I mean, now you have pledged, okay, all these other candidates except Trump have pledged to support the nominee no matter who it is, okay? That's the premise. Now we have Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, let's say she has an epiphany. She realizes, I'm not a Democrat. Oh my God, I'm a Republican. So she decides to run as a Republican. And lo and behold, it's a miracle that she becomes the Republican nominee. Well, all these people on the stage, except Trump at that last debate, every one of them have already pledged that they will vote for Hillary Clinton. They've already pledged because they were stupid. They said what they were gonna do without even knowing who the nominee was gonna be. That's not intelligence, that's being a conformist. That's falling in line like a robot with the party and doing what you're told like you're, like you're a child. How embarrassing, how embarrassing to do something like that. Now, another criticism that Trump gets, Trump will be criticized for his language. I can tell you why he gets away with it, by the way. The reason he gets away with insulting people and saying whatever is because A, he doesn't talk in a very precise way by nature. He's, he talks kind of imprecisely. He talks very quickly. He doesn't always finish his sentence. So he'll be saying something, he'll stop in the middle of a sentence and he'll go on to the next idea and you're like, you have to kind of get the gist of what he's saying sometimes. You can't always take it word for word. You have to say, oh, I know what he means by that. But the media, certain people in the media who want to get him say, oh, goody, goody, I can get him now because of what he said, because it wasn't precise. And it's easy to, to take out a little sound bite and say, fuck, he said this without with taking. And that's why they take it out of context frequently. And, um, and also he gets away with this because he kind of does it as, as part of his personality to insult men, insult women. And by the way, if you insult only men and not women, that's sexist. Insulting women along with men, that's not sexist. So to say that he's sexist is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I can't even believe there has been an entire conversation about this. I'm absolutely shocked by that. But he, he kind of has this type of personality where he just, eh, eh, eh. So if he were to call me a loser, it wouldn't mean anything to me. I'd be like, eh, he'll change his mind tomorrow. Because that's the kind of guy he is. He's like, ah, loser. Nah, I like her. She's not a loser. You know, it's like, he doesn't really mean it when he say it. It's, it's kind of a playful thing he does. Whereas if someone else like Scott Rocker or, or Hillary Clinton or, or Jeb Bush did it, they wouldn't be able to get away with it because they're seen as these kind of more serious people. They don't have that playfulness in their language it would be hard for them to get away with it. Whereas Trump is like, eh, loser. Eh, you're not a loser. It might be a loser next week. Yep, you might be a loser next week. So that's the reason why I believe he's able to get away with that kind of language. Also, um, just to, to bring up the, the debate again, the, um, the blood comment, he also made the blood in the eyes comment at the, at the same time, he made that comment against Chris Wallace, a male, Obviously, Chris Wallace wasn't having his period. 
So, I mean, I don't even understand how everybody came to this conclusion that had to do with hormones. I mean, to me, it's like, I don't even get it. I, I think it's just people who wanted to find something to attack him on because I didn't see that. My daughter didn't see that. I did think Fox News was highly unfair to Donald Trump during the debate. And I don't blame Megyn Kelly because I don't believe she's the person who was completely in control of those questions. I believe there was probably a pool of individuals at Fox News who created those questions. And I believe that when he was asked, it was not to derail his campaign, but it was to get ratings for Fox News. I think they wanted to throw him off balance. They wanted to put him in a position where he was kind of angry, upset, where he might say whatever, and they would get a headline the next day. They would have promotion for Fox News. That's what I believe it is. So, um, so, and I did feel, not only did I think it was unfair, it was interesting because I was watching the debate with my daughter when it started. And my daughter for many weeks has been saying, I'm probably going to vote for Hillary Clinton, right? So she was thinking she was a Hillary Clinton supporter, probably. And so the debate starts and he gets these first two questions. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, is this unfair. I can't believe this. My daughter, a Hillary Clinton supporter, says, why are they being so unfair to Donald Trump, Mom? She even noticed it. So it was definitely very obvious to me. And, and as I said, I think it was in an attempt to get ratings. The other thing I want to say is that um, Donald Trump is a very, he's a very likable person. And I think that that helps people to relate to him. I have to say, I have met him twice, very briefly, in person. Once was about maybe like 10, 12 years ago, and the other time was about five, four or five years ago. And he really genuinely likes people, and you can just immediately relate to him. So the fact that he's a billionaire doesn't matter to people, because not only the argument that he can't be bought, et cetera, which I think is a really positive thing, by the way, because we definitely need campaign finance reform, and, and I would like to see um, no money in politics whatsoever, personally. I'd like to see clean money elections. But it's also the fact that he is just very relatable, and that is how he comes off, and he comes off that way on television, but he even more comes off that way in person. And I think he really genuinely likes people, and he already has all the money and all the fames. So one asks oneself, why is he running for president? I believe he's running because he really wants to make a difference. He really wants to make this country better. And I think he gets gratification, like personal gratification, from doing positive things and from being co congratulated for doing positive things. And I think he likes the idea of you know, I'm going to do a great job and people are going to pat me on the back and say, wow, you're the best president ever. And I think that's why he's doing it. I also think it's a challenge for him. I think it's a challenge not only getting elected, at, but also being the best president and really doing great things for America because he loves challenges. He's an extremely competitive person and I admire that about him. And he likes to win. He likes to succeed. And he's already done all of these He's already become a success for himself, so why not broaden that and become a success, make this country a success, you know, do it for everyone in this country, not just for himself. So I totally support him. I think people need to stop dumping on Trump. I think that we need, people need to understand that there's an independent revolution going on, that independents are angry. We are, you know, fighting against the Repu Republicans and Democrats. And we're not going to put up with this two-party system anymore. You know, the idea that, that the party leaders get to decide who's an acceptable candidate and who we want to support and, and then try to force everybody and contort everybody to agree with their ideas and their premises. I think finally people are rising up against that. I'm so glad because believe me, if everybody who knows me knows, I've been saying this for decades. I mean, I've, I wrote articles about this decades ago. You can look them up online. I mean, I've been angry about this forever, so I'm really happy to see this happening. And so I am putting all my support behind Donald Trump. I also, as second place, I am I am supporting Bernie Sanders. I'm really glad that he's getting these big crowds. And, um, and I wish him all the luck on the Democratic side. And um, I look forward to this election.